pardon me. Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. That I am tardy for the party. Y'all, I'm so sorry. God bless y'all. Thank you so much for waiting. Hello, hello. We got Konita J in the house. Hey, Sakina. I got LaGoldie VIP in the house. Hey, Queen Leandra. We got Karen Flowers. We got Amanda. We got Cheryl Spark. Let's see. We got uh, a Bokar. Oh, from Somalian. Hello. Welcome. Hey, y'all. Let's see. We got Carol M. Hey, Angela Cheney. Amanda. Okay. Jamaican girl. I see you. Hey, Miss Linda Best. We got Purple Crown in the house. Hey, Purple Crown. Big K. I see you. Hey, Debbie Thomas. Patricia Wilson. Okay. I see y'all coming in. Hey, hey, everybody. Cluster B Free is in the house. Y'all make sure y'all check her out. Great information over there. Um, let's see who else we have. Let's see. We got, let's see, we got, I got you, Miss Patricia. Let's see. We got our Facebook family coming in. Okay, here we go. Hey, Tasha, Bradshaw, I see you. Thank you. Hey, Joe. Joe's in the house. Brother, hype man, nerd for the word. I see you. Hey, Carmen. Uh, Tamika, I see you. Hey, Kristen. Domi, Shante, I see you. Thank you. Hey, Thomas. Uh, is it Karen, Tom? I think it's Karen. Thank you. Hey, Nancy. Thank you, amazing lady. Brene, I see you. Thank you. Is it Maticia? Maticia Stubbs, thank you. Oh, she said it's her first time joining. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. Welcome. I got my sister joining. I seen you on the text. Thank you so, so much. God bless you. I miss you. And we got to talk when we have a moment. Destiny Drake, Monica, Kayla, Kathy. Hey, Sassy, Erica. Blackie Williams. Hey, hey, Andrea, Jared, Aaron, Marilyn. Hey, Daily Prayers. Is it Caitlin? Hey, Caitlin. Chosen Favor. Uh, Bianca. Hey, Bianca Ann. Okay, I see y'all coming in. Shantae, Tanya. She says, hey, Telsha. Hey, girly. Hey, sis. Daughter of the King. Hey, Stephanie. <laughs> Andrea Nicholson, I see you in the house. Turtur, is it Sunday? Love you back. Hey, Dawn. William, I see you. McNeil, thank you. Hey, Carmen Lopez, I see you. Hey, Keisha Graham, stay woke indigenous. Hey, stay woke. I ain't seen you in a minute. Hey, Janet, I've been the amazing certified. Red Bowl. Okay. Na uh, Naquisha, da is it Naquisha? Naquisha Davis. Hey, Shantae Norwood. I see you. Thank you. Eric uh, Moret. Destiny. Keisha Graham. I think I got you. All right, y'all. We're going to get ready to start. Itzel. Y'all, this is our roll call. So I usually get a roll call in for about five minutes. I just want to see everybody that's coming in. Thank you so much. All right, y'all, we're going to jump right into it. Um, let's see. Elizabeth, uh, let me see. Hey, Miss Jasmine. She says, hey, I can't wait to share my story. Amen. Okay, I see y'all coming in. Okay, y'all, so listen. Tonight is a uh, tonight we're going to talk about that this hijacking. OK. I called it hijacking because that's what it really is, y'all. It's it. You, you, you literally being hijacked. OK, so um, I'm going to break it down the best way I can because we need to talk about it, basically. 
Um, I washed my hair, so I have a messy bun on top. So y'all bear with me. I don't have a straight hair today, but it's all right. And we're going to jump into it. Before we get into it, I want to talk about what a hijack really is. Okay. We want to talk about what, what is, I mean, what does it mean to hijack something? Okay. Because when we talk about what it means, then we can kind of go into, okay, this is what happened. So basically when we talk about hijacking, it's like an unlawful seize. Now this is the verb of it. This is like the verb form of the word hijack. It's an unlawful seize. And usually when we're talking about hijacking, it's an aircraft, it's a ship uh, or vehicle. It could be a vessel. Okay. And the reason I chose the word hijacking is because your body, this body that we live in is a vessel. OK, this body that contains our soul, that houses our soul is a vessel, just like a vessel that's floating out on the water. This one, our body is a vessel. So when we talk about hijacking, this body can be considered a vessel. OK, so it says in transit and forced to go a different go to a different destination or uh, use it for one's own purpose. Okay. So also I wanted to go to Miriam Webster because there was a great, um, definition here that I wanted to look at. And it says to take or take control of something as if hijacking. Yeah. So that's what the narcissist does. Okay. That's what narcissistic abuse does. It hijacks your soul, okay? It's a hijacking. It's like they have literally come in with everything that they have done or, you know, all of the love bomb and everything, and they have hijacked your soul. They have literally forced you to go in a different direction. What it truly is, is that, it's like your soul has been heisted. I'm going to explain what I'm saying. Okay. Y'all ready? Let's go. So when we're talking about a, a, a person coming and hijacking your soul, usually when a hijacker gets onto a vessel or whatever, they're, they're either they force their way in or sometimes they are allowed onto the vessel. They go undetected. That's a narcissist. A narcissist comes in undetected. The reason why it's so important for us to, uh, to talk about your soul being hijacked, because if it's being controlled by a narcissist, then how are you going to be, how are you going to live your life? I'm just, you know, how are you going to, how are you going to live your life? If you have someone that is being controlled by dark entities, if you have them controlling your soul, if they've literally hijacked your soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, then how are you going to live this life? How are you going to pro progress? How are you going to move forward? How are you going to have upward mobility? It is going to literally stop your progression, it is going to stop your productivity, right? This is why we have to talk about it because you need to understand it's not just the fact that you're going no contact with this individual that is going to cause you to now heal. There's a lot of things that come after the no contact that you have to do in order to heal as well. OK, when your soul has been hijacked, your soul is a part of your spiritual nature. OK, it is. And what it does is it has the soul has an outward manifestation of what's going on in it through your body. OK, that your body is it. It begins to outwardly manifest what's inside the soul. Are y'all tracking with me? If you're tracking, put tracking in the in the chat. I want, I want to make sure I'm not losing anyone because this right here is going to be real good tonight. It's going to help some of y'all. Some of y'all going to get real free tonight. 
If you're tracking, say tracking. Okay, y'all tracking? I got you tracking. Okay, so why is it important for us to know what this hijacking means and what is going on in the mind of the narcissist and in your mind when you are literally being hijacked by this individual that comes in that tells you they love you? They say, I love you. I adore you. I this, I that, you know, and they gain that entry point into the most vulnerable space. I'm a, I'm a see, I'm a test y'all to see who's been really listening to me. What is the most vulnerable part of your soul? I'm gonna see if y'all listening. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, y'all make sure y'all hit the like button for me, okay? What's the most vulnerable part of your soul? Because your soul is comprised of your mind, your will, and your emotions. Of those three, what's the most vulnerable part? The mind, the will, or the emotions? Hey, Chanel, I see you. That's right. She, that's what she said. Hold on. She was the first one to put it up there. No, it was Monique. I'm sorry. Monique Lynn. That's it. Okay. That's the most vulnerable part of your soul. Okay. So the, the imposters enter through your emotional realm because that's what they, that's why they love bombing you. Okay. That's why they're future faking you because that, that emotional part of your soul is the easiest to access. <clears throat> now, what happens is it is one of the most powerful parts of your soul, although it's the most vulnerable because it has the ability to influence your mind. Hey, Tim. Hey, Chosen 11. I see y'all coming in. Thank you, AJ. It has the ability to heavily influence the mind and the mind is going to heavily influence your will. Okay. So the imposter enters through your emotion and your emotion now is being uh, love bombed and future faked. And this is why you have that overload of the dopamine and the uh, oxytocin that's going through your mind. So already your brain, your, your chemicals in your brain is off. Okay. So they come in messing you up. They come in messing you up. Literally. They do. This is what happens. So so when the when the the heist or the hijacking is solidified is when it gets to the mind when they start controlling this right and then this is going to inadvertently control your will but your emotions once your emotions have been heisted and hijacked right there through that love bomb and future faking you messed up you don't even know that you messed up we didn't even know it. I didn't know it. I had no clue. I didn't know what was going on. I thought that I had met someone that finally got who I was. I thought I met someone that was finally saying that I could finally say, man, I can really rest now because this person gets me. This person wants to to protect me. They want to do everything that I want to do. And they, I mean, they are just like right in line with that. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what we all thought. But you had no clue that you were being hijacked by entities that did not like you, that hated you. And let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you a secret. For those of you all that are struggling and your soul has been hijacked by the narcissist, I got to be real, real with y'all. Y'all ready? Let me go ahead and keep it all the way 1,000. I'm going to keep it a thou wow with you. The narcissist, I don't care how much they apologize to you. I don't care how much they tell you they're never going to do what they did to you again. Because they have no control over their, the dark places in their soul, they're going to do it again to you, again and again and again. You know why? They don't have any control over it. They just don't. Okay? Whenever a person's soul has been inhabited by demons 
which are dark entities. These people will have human moments. Yeah, they will. They'll have human moments where they will tell you, you know what? It's not you. It's me. I know that I don't want to lose you. And I know that you're a good person because guess what? Sometimes those demons will give them a break long enough so they can be human for a moment. Then they go right back to the rotten ways that they treat you and the horrible things that they say to you. You know why? Because they're not in control of their souls. Their souls have been literally hijacked by demons. And it's not just one that's in there. It's many. Okay. We're talking about legions. Okay. So when you think about the person that has hijacked your soul, just think about this person that is controlling your soul is being heavily influenced and controlled by demonic forces. I'm going to just let you, I'm going to put that right there. Just let y'all just marinate on that for a second. Mm -hmm. Let you marinate on it for just a second. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is why you can't get them out of your mind. Because the entities that are teaching them how to manipulate you, these demons are age old. Baby, let me tell you something. If you think that you're going to out manipulate a demon. Oh, you got another thought coming. What you got to do is you got to get them out of your life out of your space, out of your vicinity, because God is not a God of manipulation. So you're not going to combat that with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is going to teach you how to manipulate them right back. No, what's going to happen is they're going to pull you into that dark pit that they're in. And if you're going to go back and forth with them with a tit for tat, all you're doing is you're, you're making room in your soul for them entities, for those same entities to enter you. I'm just telling you. We're talking about the, the soul being hijacked, okay? How you going to have your soul hijacked by somebody that don't even love themselves? So all of the poison that is in them, they're infiltrating that same poison inside of you. That's what's happening, right? Because the poison begins to spill over. And this is why some of y'all found yourselves, watch this. Y'all found yourselves literally beginning to do some of the same things to the narcissist that they were doing to you. I see you, Leo. Thank you so much. We got another VIP in the house. It's true. You know why you start doing it? Because it was a means of a way to survive in a toxic environment. You're like, I'm sick of you doing this to me. You keep doing the same thing over and over. Put a one in the chat. If y'all found yourself doing some of the same things back to the narcissist, let me go ahead and put my one in there because I did. I'm going to go and tell the truth. I mean, you listen, the truth will make you free. It really will. You, you found yourself sitting there doing some of the same things right back to the narcissist. Look at all these ones coming up in the chat. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. I see you, Jasmine. This is what happens. You, you, you do it because guess what? You're doing it because those same demons that you have come in agreement with and, and a lot of us entered into covenant with these demons and we, we allowed them to have full access to our souls because guess what? Sex is a covenant. I told y'all that before. Sex is a covenant. Paul said in the Bible, when you when you basically have sex with a, 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 a harlot, you have become one with the harlot. OK, your soul, my soul, we can we became one with that that devil, that narcissist. Right. So now not only not only did they hijack our souls through the emotions first, but now we've made a covenant with them in the spirit. Man, we about to go deep, y'all. Y'all got your scuba gear. We about to go deep. Yeah. 
And so whatever the narcissist, like if they were experiencing people coming and having sex with them in the night, they got spirit husbands, spirit spouses. Some of them had spiritual children. You see what I'm saying? Some of y'all started having those same visitations in the night where before you got to the before you got with the narcissist you weren't having people visiting you in the night trying to violate you in the night but as soon as you went in the covenant and you had sex with that narcissist then you started having the same things happen to you you know why because covenants are recognized in the realm of the spirit and they are real baby that's an altar that's been set up and guess what? You created created that altar just by opening your legs. That covenant right there. Uh-huh. Some of y'all men by going between them legs. So what happens? Thank you so much, Chanel. She said, my narc ex-husband on a cruise with new supply when, the, uh, when this weekend, uh, this is his weekend to get our children. He knew I always wanted him to take me and our children on a cruise, but he never did. I was really hurt by this. He, but you know what? He's taking her. Thank you so much for your, uh, your super sticker. He's taking that new supply because that's what you wanted him to do for you. That's a way to hurt you. That's a way to hurt you. That's what that's doing. He wants you to come look at that on his social media page. Baby, let me tell you something. You ain't missing nothing going on a cruise with a devil, baby. You're going to be out there on the water with that demon. And guess what? Let me tell y'all something about being out on the water. Because what y'all need to understand is that, that listen, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen out there on that water with that, that woman. Thank you, Thor, Thor. Thank you for that super sticker. Do y'all know that the Marine Kingdom is the largest king? Yeah, there you go. Look, she said it right here. The marine spirits, baby, you better be glad you ain't floating out there on no water with that devil. Because guess what? Them, them marine spirits that them seductive spirits that allow them to to love bomb you and future fake you. Y'all, y'all know what? Some of y'all ain't never been told some of the stuff that we we were told by the narcissist. Some of them things that they told us blew our minds. We was like, what? You be sitting there like, who talks like this? Some of the way the 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 look like the honey that was dripping off of their lips. You know what I'm saying? The lies. The I mean, they was just. I, you just was like, where do these people get this stuff from? Baby, you don't want to be out there floating on no water with no devil like that. Them marine spirits, they know. They they like, oh, we gonna go up on this vessel because we got some. We we got some reinforcement. Guess what? You being out there on that water, you don't know what's happening to him spiritually. You don't. That woman probably out there like, what in the world has gotten into this clown? Because guess what? Those spirits are attracted to that vessel that I'm talking about the narcissist that's on a vessel that's floating out in the middle of the water, baby. You don't want that. You definitely didn't want to go on no cruise with him. You better thank God that God saved you from being out there on the water with him. Ain't no telling what he would have done out there on that water with you. Because he's heavily influenced. Listen, narcissists are heavily influenced by marine spirits. Okay? They are. That's why they lie so much. That's why they're so nasty and perverted because those spirits out of the marine kingdom are seductive spirits. They cause them to do a lot of what you see that narcissist doing. And see, because the body is made up of the, of the, the flesh goes back to the earth, the air we breathe. OK, and set and the body is 70 percent water. So what does that tell you is that the you can be ex you can be uh, affected by the spirits in the air. You can be affected by the spirits on the land. OK, or in the hills, they call it. And you can be affected by the spirits in the water. But most of the time, the ones that are going to have the easiest access to this vessel is the water spirits. Why? Because we are 70 percent water, baby. Bam, there it is. 
I'm going to teach you what your pastor ain't teaching you in the pulpit. And I ain't telling you to leave your church, but this is some supplement. So you understand what's going on, what the goings on is. Yeah. Them seductive marine spirits or something else. Okay. And then you got women on, uh, you got people like right here in the, on these YouTube platforms teaching you about, teaching you how to harness marine siren, siren mermaid spirits. Yeah. They telling you do what you want. You could do what you want. Nobody can tell you what to do. Do what you want. That's the witch's motto, ain't it? He's some, he's some wicked, wicked people. Okay. But they, they got platforms. But look, when you lift up your eyes in hell, they gonna, and you be sitting right there beside the ones that help you go there, y'all both going to be crazy, looking crazy. But see, you ain't, as long as you stand here listening to this, in the name of Jesus, hell will never be your destination. But these people don't care nothing about you. They'll say whatever. Leo, thank you so much. He said, Marine spirits, I got a revelation from God that my mom sold me to marine spirits, generational curses that started with my grandma, her body thrown in the ocean as a witchcraft sacrifice, real demon. Come on. I'm going to tell you, you see this, 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 uh, our brother right here, he has a family that's into that. This is why he goes so deep in his, in, in his revelation right there, because he said God gave him a revelation on it. You listen, God is good. He's gonna always, he's never gonna leave himself without a witness. And he's gonna always let you know what's happening. You understand what I'm saying? But are we listening to what he's saying? Thank you so much, Tim. God bless you. He says, he says, my brother, uh, my MPD brother was so ugly when he was born. Uh, we left the hospital with bags on our head. <laughs> See, he asked me one time how, how to turn off the electric fan, and I told him to grab the blade. Our mom had so many children. <laughs> had so many children. Uh, our uh, playpen looked like a bus stop for midgets. Y'all, please. <laughs> You ought to be shaking yourself. Y'all, we can't make this stuff up. He said his brother was, I'm going to tell you something. Y'all listen. Listen, Tim, I can't. I cannot. Y'all pray for your brother, please. Y'all please. Okay? Y'all pray for him. But thank you, Tim. These marine spirits. Mm -mm. Y'all want now day of that. You really don't. Do they know that they're possessed? They ain't gonna tell you that. No. Of course, of course they know that something. Look, April, thank you so much, Griffin Hines. God bless you. April says she hollering. I know. Y'all Tim funny. That is that is hilarious. But I'm gonna tell y'all something. They don't know that they're necessarily possessed, but what they do know is that something is different about them. They do know that, okay? They know that. They know something is different about them and they know that um, they don't think like everybody else. They don't do things like everybody else. They do know that, okay? But these marine spirits are what the narcissist uses to get to uh, to actually hijack you in your emotional realm. That's why they are so seductive in the love bomb. That's why not only are they seductive, but they back it up with the future faking because they want you to uh, really believe in what they're doing. Thank you so much, Aaron. I see you. God bless you on the cash app. Thank you, sir. They want you to really believe in the lies that they're telling. OK, so this is why they do the future faking and the love bomb together. All right. So you can't you, you listen in yourself. You cannot compete with that. Now, you can't you can't uh, compete with it and you definitely can't go toe to toe and tit for tat. 
Because all you're going to do is when you are opening yourself up to go tit for tat, all you're doing is opening your soul up to be uh, heavily influenced by demonic forces as well. Because you have to learn, you because what you're doing is you're inviting spirits of manipulation inside of you so you can go toe to toe with the manipulator themselves. Okay? You don't want that. You don't want that because although you may not have a possession, what you will begin to be is heavily influenced in your soul, which is called a demonic oppression. All right. And that is what causes you. Then some of y'all, when, when that thing begin to come in like that, how many of y'all going to testify when y'all started trying to manipulate the narcissist, you went into a state of depression and oppression yourself. Put a two in the chat. I'm going to show you what these spirits do. You felt like you was in a state of depression and oppression. When you started going toe to toe with that narcissist, put a two in the chat. I'm going to show you what happens. Y'all went into a state of oppression and depression. Trying to go toe to toe with that devil. Y'all see this? You see it? That's why. That's why. Because you cannot engage in manipulation without the spiritual backing. So there has to be something there in that soul realm to teach you or to, or to influence you to manipulate. But what they don't tell you when you plan that manipulation game, see that those demons come in, they come in twofold. They're not going to just teach you how to manipulate, but they're going to also get something on the back end with you too. They're going to oppress you and depress your soul. Cut off your productivity and stagnate your mobility. There it is right there. Hello, lights. Hello, wall. Because your productivity and your mobility, your productivity, right? Your productivity begin to be non-existent. They're going to cut it off. They're going to bind your hands. This is what it looks like in the realm of the spirit is your hands being bound. Your mobility is going to be stagnated, right? You, they got to, because while you do, because the enemy ain't going to let you play with his stuff for free. You got to pay for that. And, and your payment is going to be something that he's going to subtract from your soul. That means that your productivity is going to be lacking. You, he's going to stop your productivity and he's going to limit your, your mobility. You're going to be, you go, and, and when you can do those two things, you can bind the person in the spirit. And what he does is after he, after he cuts that productivity and limits your mobility, then he, and you still got that covenant existing with the narcissist, then guess what? What happens is they, they, you're, you're binded to those demonic forces in the narcissist is too. This is why a lot of you lost your jobs. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is why a lot of you lost jobs. You lost businesses. You lost all of that. I'm teaching you something because the enemy knows is if he can stop your productivity and he can limit your mobility and he can bind you to another uh spirit in the, in the, uh bind you to another person in the realm of the spirit that's already bound with demonic forces he can stop you and not only can he stop you but he can he can change your destiny because you bound now you bound this is how you look you you look like you shackled in the realm of the spirit. That's how you look. Shackled. That's how that works. It's a shackling. It's you are literally caged in the spirit. Your soul has been captured and hijacked. You don't even know. You don't know what happened. You don't even know what happened. You just sitting there like, what is going on here? But that's what's happening to you. Karen says, how do we break the spiritual ties uh, they have with our children, my daughter's uh, narc, my daughter's father is a narc and my father is a narc too. The way you break those spiritual uh, ties is you got to go and break the spiritual stronghold, that emotional stronghold in your soul got to go. It's got to go. 
And the only way that you're going to be able to break that, like the Bible says, these kind only come out through fasting and prayer. And a lot of y'all need deliverance. I love that Angela Cheney, the procrastination is huge because that's a part of the limitation. Remember when we talked about the spirit of limitation, that procrastination is a huge part of that runs, that procrastination is going to run with that spirit of limitation. Absolutely. Because remember, demonic forces never work alone. They work in tandem. Remember that. OK, Stephanie Mills, thank you so much. But that is how you're going to get rid of it. There's no other way around it. You could go no contact all you want. But until you start to do the work on your soul, you're going to stay bound. That's the way it works spiritually. See, you got to remember, we're not a physical being having an earthly experience. We are a spiritual being having an earthly experience. Okay? So the parent world, which is the spirit world, is the one that dictates what happens here in the natural. Okay? That's how that works. Stephanie, thank you so much. She said, please explain how the family helps the narc in the love bomb and discard phase. Well, what they do is they come in to, they love bomb you as well. OK, the family comes in and backs up the lies that the narcissist tells. They know it's lies. They know that the narcissist is a horrible individual, but they come in and the family love bombs you, too, because it's not just the narcissist that is using you. The family is using you, too. A lot of you all, just like myself, you're going to testify that the, you gave the family uh, things, just, gifts and and access to you, just like you did the narcissist. They play the game. And then in the discard, they come in, the family comes in and access the flying monkeys to go back and forth between the two of you to get you back together. That's what they do, Stephanie. Okay. So they work with the narcissist. Okay. This is an operation. I'm telling you, they act like a gang. This is what it is. Uh, uh, Leo, thank you so much. He says, I went toe to toe with the NARC fam. Marine spirits operate in a group effort. I had lost myself in the process. My heart purity where I had struggled with depression and productivity controlling. There, you, there it is right there. Y'all see it? There it is right there. See, See, God gives, when God gives you deep prophetic insight on how these things work, this is why I bring it to you the way that I do. This right here is not for the person that's on the milk. These of this, this, the, this information right here is some deep information, right? You got to understand the word. And not only that, you got to understand how the spirit world works because life is spiritual, baby. Life is spiritual. If you think it's anything other than spiritual, baby, let me tell you something. You gonna be you you'll be sadly mistaken. Okay, fine, I got you. In this chat, let me see what's going on. Okay, Hold on, y'all. Let me see. Okay, I got you. Yeah, so. Life is spiritual. So when you understand, when you understand what happens and why this hijacking is you, we got to talk about it and we got to dissect this thing and pull it apart. This is why. Because you got, you, you, you're, you're never going to play a manipulation game with a narcissist or any type of toxic individual and win. You're not going to. You're not going to. You're not going to be able to do that. And see, if you think that you can you can you can operate with manipulative spirits and you're going to get out scot free, you're not. Because those same manipulative spirits that you're operating with and you're you're working in, you know, you think that I mean, and manipulation can be just as simple as gaslighting the narcissist back. It's so tempting, y'all. Because I'm going to tell you, especially when you have a gift to be able to see the inner workings of a person like I do, y'all, I'd be tempted so bad. And you see people trying to just do you and you already know 
you can see them spiritually. You can see the inner workings. You can see what 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 demons are are plaguing that person. Sometimes I have to really pray because there's a fine line. Watch this. There's a fine line between the prophetic and divination. There's a very fine line. OK. And when you have been gifted with a prophetic gift, you have to ve- you have to be very careful. I have to be very, very careful to guard my heart and my mind. You know why? Because when you can see spiritually what a person is dealing with and they trying to come at you sideways, you know how to mess them up. You can mess them. When I tell you, you don't, that's why you don't mess with a, you don't mess with a prophet. Leave them alone. You know what I'm saying? People that are gifted in the prophet, you'll just leave them alone because if a prophet gets messed up, they are really messed up. That's why the Bible says if the if a if the light be single in a in a vessel in the eye, if that light be single, right? That the whole body is full of light. But if that eye be full of darkness, how great is that darkness? You know why? Because if God has gifted you in that way and you turn to the dark side, you don't want to, that person will be a horrible individual, okay? A horrible individual that can do some real damage. You know why? Because the gift of foresight is never taken away from that person because that's their gift, right? God doesn't take your gifts away from you. But when you can, you you operating on the dark side and you can see you can see because of that prophetic gifting. See, demons can't see in the future. They're not omniscient. They can't see that. But you got the ability to see things that they can't see. Don't you know that a lot of witches and warlocks have been traumatized and a lot of them are actually gifted in the prophetic. A lot of them are actually, they were gifted with that as uh, as they came to the earth with it. That's why they want the, That's why they recruit people like that. But don't ever fall when if you know that God is giving you a spiritual gift like that, don't ever fall into that. Always guard your heart because it's easy to want to get people back. Right. It's easy to want to get that revenge and mess their minds up. Don't do it. Don't do it because I'm going to tell you something. You will be very sorry because in the end, you will always lose. You will always lose. Stay in the path of righteousness. These people will make you want to go. These people will make you want to lose your religion, your salvation, and your freedom. This is why you have to stay away from them, right? This is why you have to unhook these hooks in your soul that have been, that has hijacked you and made you become, made you become a person that you're not. When a narcissist hijacks your soul, they literally can control you by remote control. That's how they do. All they got to do is say a word and set you off. Say something else, make you cry. Say another thing, make you laugh. Say something else, make you feel crazy. That's your soul on remote control. Your soul is on remote control. I want y'all to just really listen to that. I want that to really sink into your mind. And how did they do that? They did They did it because they entered your emotion and your emotion being as powerful as it is because when you don't have control and mastery of your emotions because you're spiritually immature, meaning you don't know the word of God, you don't know how to apply it to your life, you don't know how to how to really master those emotions, right? Because you're spiritually immature, that thing right there really does a number on you. Why? Because the enemy knows that if he can hit you with something and you react to it, that tells him, I told y'all that before, it tells him, where you are spiritually. It, it gives him a barometer as to where you are spiritually. Either you're mature or you're immature. The enemy is a narcissist. He really is. He's a narc. You can tell by the way he behaves and the way he moves. See, he don't know everything. 
And the only way he knows something is that you tell him. You start to say it out of your mouth or he has monitoring spirits monitoring you and you start doing things. These monitoring spirits report back to him. But the way that the enemy knows how to affect you is because you talk too much. We talk too much. We start telling this right here, get on my nerves so bad. I hate when people do this. I can't stand it when they do this, that, and the third. That just get on my nerves. When you say that, guess what? Y'all find those same people coming and doing exactly what you said got on your nerves. Don't you? Put a yes in the chat if you, if, if that, when you speak it out of your mouth, that's what you get back. Let me put my yes in there. I, I forgot to put my two up there, but let me go and put my yes in the chat. Because guess what? The enemy, you tell him how to hit you. You tell him. He said, I'm glad you said that. I'm going to send about 10 more people over there to do that same thing to you. Because I can't wait to see how you're going to react to all of these different ones. And that's why you see people, it's like, the the it, uh, that's why the Bible describes it as the enemy coming in like a flood. Y'all see these yeses? You tell him how to do it. You tell him how to hit you. And when we give him that information, what he does is he puts his imps on the run to come and, and, and do us in even more. And remember, your soul is already in a hijacked state. You're not even in control of it. You got a you got a narcissist that has zero control over themselves. They have the uh, they want the authority of a king and they have the accountability of a toddler. And we literally allow these crazy nut jobs to to uh, to have our souls on remote control just by what they would say to us. I want y'all to just really think about that. How they could say something so messed up. And cause you to cry and scream and 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 beg them not to go. And and I mean, they just you was we were so trauma bonded to them. Yeah. That part. You mean my soul is on re remote control and it's being controlled by your poisonous tongue, by the poisonous tongue of a narcissist. Man. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, Leo, thank you so much. He says, my spiritual gifts from my great grandma um, uh, is from my great grandma. Used her gift for witchcraft. Oh, wow. There you go. God had to deal with me. Whenever I got revenge and blessings, uh, whenever I got revenge, blessings was blocked for a time. God said to me, you know better against God. Look at that. When you have a spiritual gift, you better guard your heart, especially the gift to see. You better guard it because people will come at you and make you want to go there. Okay. Don't let them do it to you. But y'all, listen, we have to learn how to pull back. You cannot allow your soul, your emotions to be controlled by the poisonous lips of a narcissist. You need to see their tongue as a forked tongue like a snake. That's what it is. Because the very thing that they speak over your life, when you are in covenant with these clowns and you are out of control and your soul is on remote control through and these are, and I'm going to tell you something, you don't know this, but when your soul is on remote control like that, it's on an altar. That narcissist has erected an altar in the rim of the spirit by the covenant that you have made with them, that you come in agreement with them, right? Through your emotion, your emotions, now your emotions are heavily influencing your thoughts and your thoughts are now heavily influencing your will. That's how it works. But the enemy understands that the most vulnerable part of your soul is your emotion. 
And if you are spiritually immature, then he understands that that is the easiest way to get into your soul realm and hijack your soul is to make you an emotional, irrational, illogical individual. Because people that are emotional, they don't, they're very irrational and illogical. They don't really think with logic. They wear their emotions on their sleeves, right? Their heart on their sleeves. They walk with a spirit of offense. They get offended by everything because they're emotionally immature. And these are the very ones that the enemy, he can, he can affect them very easily because he knows what is comprised in that soul. He knows what, what demons he have in there. They report right back to him. They occupy dark places in the soul that, that the, that light has not entered through it. And see those dark places are, are places of ignorance where light has not entered into, into that place, the light of God to cause them to be enlightened in that area. So they don't fall into those traps of the enemy. The application of knowledge is power. Not just knowledge itself, but the application of it. Tim, thank you so much. He says, uh, he says I should have known what was uh, in store for me with the ex-MPD. I went to give a, a peck on the cheek. Next thing I know, grab, uh, next thing I know grabs me by the ears. Now I look like a, uh, now look like, now I look like a cab with the back doors open. No, says she's an ant eater exploring my throat. Oh my gosh. Stay strong. <laughs> I know she did. <laughs> Man, you got messed up with her, didn't you? Gosh, that's horrible. She is an ant eater. She ain't just an ant eater. She a soul. She's a soul hijacker too. Y'all get your brother. <laughs> I tell you, thank you so much, Tim. I'm gonna tell y'all something. That that right there. When when you when you understand that you gotta uh, you gotta you gotta get into that. You gotta get into the word. And not only do you have to get into the word, but the word has to get into you because a lot of times, thank you so much, Tim. A lot of times we sit down and think that we're reading the word and the word is entering us and it's not, it's not entering us because when, how do you know that the word is entering you is, you know, that the word is entering you when you start behaving differently. When you feel those oppress oppressions leaving your soul and you start thinking differently. That's how we know that the word is entering us because the Bible says it is the entrance of thy words with an S and words is cap is a uh, lowercase. So that doesn't just mean the Bible. That means also the revelation that he speaks into our souls. It is the entrance of thy words that giveth light to the, that giveth light and understanding to the simple. Right. And what that means is that when enlightenment comes, even a fool would understand it. That's what he's saying. When the enlightenment comes, Robin, thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for that super sticker. God bless you for that. That's what it means that when enlightenment comes, that it giveth light to this vessel and understanding to the simple. So that means if uh, 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 even a fool could understand what the what the spirit of the living God is revealing at that moment. That's what that means. So you want to you want you in, in order to back yourself out of this hijacked state. You got to you got to realize what got you into it. Right. So what's the strategy? I'm about to give you strategy. Right. Watch this. Stop allowing people to activate your emotion so easily. Do you know that a witch could walk up to you and tell you something? And you come in agreement with a statement that they make. 
they can have access to your soul just like that. Because you came in agreement. All they need is agreement. That's all they need. It's just an agreement. Just something. Just a little bit of something for you to participate. Just something. Okay? The way that you're going to master your emotions is that you're going to have to master the soul by feeding it the word of God. Got to change it. Stop watching all of these movies on TV. Stop listening, listening to all of this crazy music, drill music, trap music, all of this, because what, in, what entertains you will enter you, okay? Stop watching all of these action, violent flicks on TV. Stop that. That stuff is entering your soul. And this is what makes it so easy. That Why do you think that the enemy puts TV content on TV? Why do you think you got all of these, these uh, streaming uh, uh, apps that give you free content? I want you to sit there and think about that for a minute. Why do you think that TV is free now? You don't even have to pay for cable. You don't. You know why? Because the Marine Kingdom understands the power that is in the content that you watch it. You sitting up watching these award shows, these Oscars and the and the uh 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 um uh, what uh Oscars and what's that other one the uh, um the music award shows, all of that. You sitting up watching all of these these performances and stuff, and all you're doing is getting indoctrinated or perhaps initiated. Your soul is being affected by what is coming into your eye gate. I'm telling you, yes, the Grammys, Karen, that's it. They got all of this dark stuff up on the screen and you watching that. That thing is going to, you, you, do, you know that the eyes are the windows to the soul? That's the window. Emily Macbeth, thank you so much. She says, I met the narc when I was 17 and I'm now 30. I went no contact one-on-one, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. He completely drained my light, my passion and spirit. Yeah, because that's what they're supposed to do. That's what they're sending to your life to do. Uh-huh. I now live in another state. Glory to the most high. Thank God you got away because that's what you have to do. You got to get away from these people. They're crazy. But I'm telling y'all, yeah, a lot of y'all can't get free because you can't get free from that TV. I'm going to tell you right now. I, I, I could probably count the hours of TV that I watch on one hand in probably a whole year. I stopped watching TV a long time ago. I did. Most of what most of the content that I take in are sermons. Um, listening to the word of God. Um, actually, um, listening to Bible, different Bible studies by different apostles that I trust. That's, that's most of the content that I take in, in my vessel. You know why? Because it's important for me to feed my spirit man, because I can't come out here and teach you what, like I do, if I'm sitting there watching, you know, people get shot up on the TV screen. Now I do love me a good comedy show. Um, Every now and then, I do. I'll I'll I'll, I'll break I'll, I'll I'll break away sometimes and watch a good stand up comedian from time to time. One that don't cuss too much, you know, or perhaps not at all if I can find it. Um, I like that. Every now and then, I like to get a good laugh in. But all of this other stuff and the sex and the drugs and the violence and all of this different music that you listen to, all of these things are transports to get demons inside your soul. Because as soon as you have an emotional reaction to what you see on that screen, you just gave the enemy access to your soul. That is. I just put it out there. The devil don't want you to know that. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Yeah. And it's fictitious. But this is why content is free. Because he wants to bind your soul. He just need access to it. Just react to this, what you see on the screen. 
and I'm going to get right up in there. That's what the enemy is saying. I'm going to give you all this free content so I can bind you in the realm of the spirit and you ain't going to know how to get free because you don't even know how he got in there. But I'm telling you, that's how he gets in. Ruth, thank you so much. She said the narc I was with can't even look at me in my eyes during kids drop off. Think he can't handle uh, to see the Holy Spirit staring back at him now. That's a that's a very real possibility right there because they don't like the light. Ruth, you're absolutely correct. They don't want to see the light. Leo, thank you so much. He says, uh, thank you, Ruth. Leo, he says, uh, exactly. They went, uh, they want to paint all women as, uh, as whores and all black men as effeminate. They're attacking black heterosexuality. TV won't allow black characters with proper dignity outside of drugs. Listen, the man just said it. He just said it. I hope y'all listening. This is the agenda. This is the agenda. And it's real. That's real talk. That's real talk. But see, you're only going to understand it if you're spiritual, right? If you're still caught up in carnality, you're not going to understand what we're saying. Because the carnal mind cannot understand and it can't, it, it, it doesn't read or it doesn't understand what 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 the spirit is is saying it doesn't perceive that right you, you you can't you can't live this life with a carnal mind and think you're gonna win you're not it doesn't work that way you gotta you gotta learn how to guard your heart because when you guard your heart what you do is you allow God to really come in and to and to really set you up for success because when you uh, when you do not allow just anything to come into your into your vessel when you people allow just anything. hold on just hold on just a second. Um, when you don't allow just anything to come into your, your vessel, the enemy knows that, wait a minute, I'm not just working with this person right here that, wait a minute, now they know what time it is. Yeah, because you know what? The enemy wants to, he wants to sift you as wheat. He really does. He wants to sift you as wheat. He doesn't want you to know what's happening to you. Those of you that have sent um, stars on Facebook, thank you so much. Um, I didn't, I don't get to see those on my YouTube screen uh, or the, the stream yard screen, but I just wanted to say thank you to you all. And I try to go in and um, um, comment and um, say thank you to you all. But yeah, I y'all, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You, in order to, to get your soul off of remote control, you got to start doing things different. The strategy has to be that your mind has to change about your spiritual nature. Listen, you can't be affected in your soul and think that you're going to take something tangible and carnal to fix it. Your soul is a part of your spiritual nature. Whatever has made your soul sick, right? You can't cure it with something carnal like a medication. I said it. I said it. You can't medicate a demon. You can't medicate holes in your soul. Let me just keep going. You can't medic you can't medic medicate trauma. No, you can't. You can't you can't medicate those things. Now, what you can do is you can you can eliminate them by meditating on the word of God and allowing that to sink down into your soul, allowing it to take root because that word begins to wash your soul. No soul can remain in a hijacked position when light is coming into that vessel because the light literally drives out the darkness. 
So whatever has hijacked your soul, those demons that are hiding in the dark places of your soul, they have to leave when you begin to meditate on the word of God and you begin to do something differently by feeding your spirit prayer and fasting and the word of God. Baby, that's the only way you're going to get free. I'm going to tell you right now. Word to the wise. That's the only way that you're going to get free. I don't care what type of antidepressants, and I'm not telling you to stop taking your medicine. I'm not telling you that. But what I am telling you is that there is no, and I'm going to tell you, psychologists and psychiatrists will tell you too. This medicine is not going to cure your condition. It's not going to cure you. It is there to basically be a Band-Aid. People are on years on medication for years and years and years because they are too, either they're too ignorant of the, of the spirit world and don't understand how it works for their soul to be healed. This is why I push you all to go from healing to wholeness to boldness. Remember, I don't just stop with healing because healing is just what it is. Wholeness is the next step because wholeness means that the holes in the soul have been closed. Healing just means that I have recognized what has affected me and I'm doing something about it. That's why healing is a progressive thing. Oh Lord, I'm giving, I'm giving you some deep revelation right here. That is why healing is a progressive thing. It's an active thing, right? It's an active thing, healing. When we talk about healing, we talk about something that is currently happening. But when you go to a place of wholeness, that means that you recognize what needed to be healed and you're working, actively working on that. But when the wholeness comes in, that means that you have allowed the light of God to come into those dark places that needed healing and has brought revelation of the word. Huh? Come on, Jesus has brought revelation of the word and light into those places and now has made those places whole with light, enlightenment. That's what has happened. And then you went, and, and I'm going to tell you something about a person that has been made whole. You got a bold individual when you have been made whole. You know why? Because wholeness brings about a boldness in you. It just does. Because it doesn't, because wholeness, what it does is it doesn't allow the vessel to remain in an inferior, right, position. The heart posture is no longer inferior and scared. Oh, no, 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 no. You gonna have a boldness about you when you become whole. You ain't, you know why? One of the main reasons is because fear has been eliminated from the soul. Have y'all ever seen people that are just so fearless? They are just fearless. And the, and the people that you see, when you see a fearless individual, what you normally see is a person with a lot of boldness. They're just fearless. They don't have any, they don't have any inhibitions. They just, they're fearless. When fear is in your soul, fear causes you to feel inferior. It causes you to feel, uh, it causes you to have low self-esteem. It causes you to, uh, um, uh, to feel like, um, uh, not just in, there's a, the, the other N word that I'm looking for, um, insignificant. It causes you to feel like that because fear is that gateway that allows these demonic oppressions to come in right? Inferior, insignificant, all of that. Insecure. That's the word that I'm looking for. Insecure. It allows you, you, you feel all of that when you're in fear because that's what fear is supposed to do. It's supposed to work with all of these other spirits to keep you in a depressive state of mind, to keep your soul oppressed. 
That's what it's there to do, right? But once that boldness, when you go from healing to wholeness to boldness, that, that, that wholeness kicks that fear right out of your soul. Baby, you become so bold and brash, man, you, they be looking at you like this one right here. Oh, you, you, that's why you can, you can see people teaching and preaching the word of God with such a powerful anointing because that soul has been made whole. And they're teaching it with a holy boldness. That's why the Bible says the righteous shall stand bold as what? Lions. So that lets you know that God wants us to have a boldness. That lets you know. He says the righteous shall stand bold as lions. That's the word. That's in the word. Chanel, thank you so much. He says, she says, uh, praying for God to intervene for me and my children to be able to relocate and move far away from a uh, narc ex-husband. Only God can do this for us. Yes. And when you pray about that, make sure you ask God to give you a strategy as to how he wants you to do it. OK, not just the move, but ask God for strategy. That's what you want, because that strategy is going to show it's going to give you step by step, because sometimes we just think we need to move. But what I want you to pray for is ask God to give you a strategy. God, how do you want me to move in this? How I want your divine plan and strategy right? Because you know you can't go wrong with that. Leo, thank you so much. He says, at one point I took antidepressants only uh, last two weeks. I, it didn't solve my problems until I faced them head on. From here, I began healing. Look at that. Lots of pain, anger, and sleepless nights, but I, I'm becoming bold. Listen, and I'm going to tell you something about that anger. I tell you, the enemy loves to keep us in an angry place because that it, that's an emotion that he knows that he can work with in that soul. But I'm so glad that you are healing and you're going to that place of wholeness and boldness because God wants us to be bold. He wants us to be righteous and he wants us to be bold. But not only that, you want to be whole because a whole person can't have a hijacked soul. A narcissist can't work with that. That soul has to come out of that hijacked position when you start to feed it something other than this mess that you be taking in on, on, on uh, this TV and these radio stations and listening to all of that junk going into your ear gates and your eye gates. Some of y'all need to watch the food you eat. Some of the food that you eating is bad. These GMO, these GMO foods and genetically modified things. Y'all don't know what they're doing in these plants when they're uh, 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 making and, and processing these foods. People dropping dead from heart attacks left and right. You understand what I'm saying? Some of you got to watch what you're taking into your, your vessel. B. Monroe says she's struggling to let go of trap music. Yeah, that trap music is bad because it puts you in a mindset and you don't want your mind set on anything but the mind of Christ. That ain't the mind of Christ in that. And that's what the enemy wants. And I, and I applaud you for saying that you're struggling with it, but you, you, you're going to get a strategy out of this tonight. Uh, Tim says one time she put a, a peekaboo uh, nighty what? She put on a peekaboo nighty and I pinked and she, I peeked and she <laughs> said she was so skinny when she didn't have, <laughs> and when she didn't shave her legs, it looked like two caterpillars <laughs> carrying a stick as if it was, wasn't for her, uh, Adam's apple. She wouldn't have any curves. Lord have mercy. Tim, I don't even know how you dealt with that. I just don't know, bro. How did you do it? <laughs> Hilarious. Stay strong. Not an Adam's apple. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> y'all, listen. Thank you so much, Tim. I want y'all to really, yeah, he's something else, y'all. I want y'all to really, really take a hard, long look. Tonight, we are getting rid of 
this hijacking. Tonight, you need to understand that that content that you watching on TV and all of these things, I know y'all, y'all cracking up all of these things that the enemy has given you, has, has put out in the atmosphere for you. It's assisting in your soul, staying vulnerable enough for him to continue to access you. This is why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, right? For out of it flows the issues of life, okay? There is a reason why he tells you to guard it. The heart is synonymous for the mind, okay? The heart is synonymous for the mind. The two are interchangeable. And your mind is a part of your soul, okay? Anyone that can control your emotions can eventually control your thoughts and can eventually and ultimately control your will. Okay. And that means music as well. You know why? Because this music makes you feel a certain type of way, especially when it's a trap, when it's trap music, make you feel gangster and hood and you do, 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 do this and that. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's and then and then it starts to put a, a demonic mindset up there, right? And then next thing you know, you start acting out the same stuff that this music is talking about. You want to live that trap life, and it's completely ungodly because music is a transport. Do you know that music can initiate your soul into darkness, right? That's why sometimes when y'all watch this, let me give y'all some revelation. That's why sometimes when y'all see these performers out here performing like your girl, the beehive, the, the, the Miss, Miss, Miss Beyonce. Yeah, I said it. Just to show you how powerful music is. Sometimes y'all have seen that woman literally give out on stage. Like she just standing there like, like she's so tired. Then a drum cadence comes in. A drum cadence comes in. That's that, that is, that is activating demonic forces. And y'all see her go into a whole nother person. I be getting to the money. Y'all seen that? Yeah. Because drum cadences, different cadences activate demonic forces. And all of a sudden, y'all can see these performers go into a whole nother breakdown that you just, it looked like another person is controlling their body. That's why. That's why. Music is a transport. When Pete, when the sorcerers are out there doing their things, witches and warlocks, when they're when they are conjuring certain demons, they have to have drums to conjure them. This is why you hear, especially in these people that uh, that are uh, say they done sold their souls or you know their allegiance to the enemy. There are certain drum cadences that they use in their music, certain bass lines, heavy drums in a situation or in the music because there's a spiritual over there's a there's a spiritual atmosphere that they're creating right that is conducive for demons to operate in and when you watching it or when you listening to it you have just now put yourself spiritually in that atmosphere for those same demons to access you there it is and, and one thing that I want to leave you with, if you think that you're going to be in an environment and you're just not going to say anything and you're just going to sit there and listen and just keep to yourself in the spiritual realm, watch this. Silence is an agreement. That's an agreement. Mm -hmm. Silence is an agreement. When you don't say, yeah, oh, well, I didn't agree to it, but you said nothing. You didn't oppose it either. So that's an agreement. All right.
Diane's uh Diane MC, thank you so much. God bless you for that, uh, for your generosity. God bless you on the cash app. Thank you so much. This silence is your agreement. So get out of the atmosphere. Okay. Turn the TV off. Stop watching what you're watching because all of this right here is playing into your soul remaining in a hijacked position. Okay. I said that before. Some of y'all can't get free because your uh some of y'all can't get free because of what you're taking into your vessel you got to stop right because it's activating your emotions and it's keeping your emotions raw and vulnerable get into your word and let your word get into you okay be a, a desire to be filled with the holy spirit because the Holy Spirit will teach you things that you don't even know. Do y'all know by the baptism of the fire, there are some things that I had no idea, no clue of, and some things that I just run up on. And I'm just like, what is that? And the Spirit will quicken me just like that. And don't you know that the Holy Spirit will give me a download and tell me exactly what's happening right there? That is a powerful weapon to have. That's like having a superpower because it really literally is. It's a superpower. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of the living God inside of you. So you don't just uproot these systems without instituting another system. When we are dismantling demonic systems that cause our souls to be hijacked, we have to institute a Christ system, a Christ consciousness in that place and then feed that conscience with the right things like fasting, the word of God, prayer, not just prayer for yourself of petitions, but intercessory prayer. Right. And guard your heart, guard your eye gates. Right. Your ear gates, be careful what you eat, pray over your food, be careful what you drink, pray over your water. I showed y'all that video last week of the people going in there praying over the liquid death water, get it, uh, 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 releasing demons into the water. Y'all remember that from last week? Be careful, be careful. This vessel is spiritual. What you experienced in this hijacking situation was spiritual. There is no way that you're going to just be able to move away from the narcissist and forget about them. Spirits will follow you wherever you are. Okay. Distance is not a barrier in the realm of the spirit. Do you know some part, some people think they can move away from a witchcraft situation? I'm going to move to Australia and the witches is in New York. Them witches ain't worrying about you going to know Australia because they know what they can do. Thank you, Vivian. God bless you. I see you on the cash app. God bless you. Thank you for that. Them witches are there. They ain't worrying about you moving to know Australia because they know they can astral project and be in Australia in two shakes of a lamb's tail, baby. Your spirit is accessible anywhere. They can. The spirit realm moves like this, okay? This realm is the dense realm, slow. You know, but the spirit realm, there's no, there's no distance in the spirit realm. The distance, the, the, there's no distance. A witch can astral project from Africa and come meet you right here in America. Vice versa. You understand what I'm saying? This is why, this is why that, that live stream on obedience was so powerful because when you're walking in obedience, your, your soul has a very low propensity of being hijacked by demonic forces and those that are allowing demonic forces to use them. This is why. This is why. You know, obedience is better than sacrifice, right? But in the place of obedience is the blessing because the Bible says that a curse causeless cannot come. So if you're walking in obedience, you don't have to worry about being cursed with all of that. And when you have the when you have the baptism of the fire, I'm going to tell you what happens there. When you turn on certain stuff on the TV and you turn on certain stuff on the radio, that fire inside of you, the spirit of the living God, it, it make me do this. Turn it off. 
because it's an irritation to the spirit of the living God inside of me. I can't listen to that. And I can't watch it either because it irritates my spirit. It really does. And that's how you know that the, that the spirit of the living God is alive and active in you. It's because you can't watch everything. You can't listen to everything. You sure enough can't eat everything. I wish I wish somebody would. Now, I'm not talking about what people eat or whatever, because you eat what you want. But I ain't never like no chitlins, okay? And they stink and they smell like I don't know what. I don't want that. What I want something smelling like behind. It smell like what you defecate in a toilet. And you want me to put that in my vessel? No, ma'am. No, sir. No, sir. Just the smell of it alone has got me running. Mm -mm. Now, I ain't talk about y'all. those of y'all that love them. Some of y'all might just love them. And that's, that's wonderful. Uh-uh. I don't want it. I don't want it. And that's and 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 I'm just saying and and am I saying that you're not filled with the Holy Ghost if you eat them? No, you your Holy Ghost might be able to take them. Mine don't. I just don't want that in my body. Right? So, I'm saying all of that to say this. I explained to you what healing. Healing is an active thing, right? Some some people say I've been healed and that's wonderful. Right. Because some people have been healed in that area. That thing has been closed up and it's been uh, locked and keyed by the Holy Ghost. And that place is healed. But until the wholeness comes into that place, there's still going to be some vulnerability. This is why the world tells you when you have uh, when when people have experienced cancer, watch this. The medical community will tell you that the cancer is in remission. The devil is a liar. If you've been healed of cancer, don't you ever say that you are in the R word. You say that I have been healed, right? Because when you say that you're in remission, you're giving that spirit a permission to possibly come back and reopen that case that God has closed for you. I'm just giving you wisdom, giving you revelation. Okay, don't ever say that. See, this is how you know that the world is working for the kingdom of darkness because they tell you remission. No, you've been healed. And as long as you profess healing, then that's where you will stay in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says that we can decree a thing and it shall be established. Okay? Remember, your words have power. And the only thing that you can send into the future to meet you there is your words, your prayers. Don't ever just speak recklessly out of your mouth. That's why you have to get away from these narcissists because narcissists are reckless with their mouths. Very reckless. They'll say anything. Okay. Don't have people in your presence that will just say anything out of their mouths. That's a very dangerous individual. And if they were, if they are reckless talking about other people, guess what? They'll be reckless talking about you because it lets you know that they have no mechanism. They, there's no conviction in their mind that stops them from saying poisonous things about people. You'll be next. Get them people from around you. Don't allow them in into your space, and definitely don't give them a a a. a access to your proximity of intimacy, which is your soul, your emotions. Strategy, don't just meditate or, or don't just read the word, but meditate on the word. Allow the word to enter you. And when you see, when that word begins to enter you, your prayer is going to change, right? Your prayers are going to change. Your language is going to change when light begins and that revelation from the word of God and you being diligent in your study and, and your and your fasting and prayer. You're going to see a difference in your life. This is the only thing that can take you out of a hijacked. Take your soul out of being in a state of being hijacked. 
because it's not we we say it's being hijacked by uh, the narcissist, but literally what it is is being hijacked by the enemy. That's literally what is being what's happening, and your soul was on remote control. The only way that you can take that soul off of remote control and being hijacked is that you got to put something in that soul that is going to fight off and to cleanse that soul. And it's going to shut down demonic forces that are attempting to live there and access that realm and to oppress you. You got to put something in there that's more powerful than what's in this world. Hey, you got to do it. There's no way of getting around that. Uh, Tim, thank you so much. He says, after her after her cooking, we prayed after we ate. I buried uh, many meals in the yard. I know you did. The, uh, the flies all chipped in to fix the holes in the screen. <laughs> no, they chipped in to fix the holes in the screen. Ah, we did. Uh, when we uh, did toast. Uh, let's see. When did toast start having bones? I don't know. When did it? It didn't. Laughter is an instant vacation. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> thank you. Ruth, thank you so much. She says, um, she says the narc, when I discarded him, called me the fat B word. Now I struggle with weight issues. I've been fasting to break the word curse. He put me on. Oh, he was almost 300 pounds. Okay, so let me tell you what you do with that. You go into the realm of the spirit and what this is what you say. I render those words powerless and I cause them to fall to the ground. That's what you do. I take myself out of agreement with that word curse. I uproot it and I overthrow it in the name of Jesus. It is no longer a part of my destiny and my life. It will no longer affect my soul. I cause those words to fall to the ground. This is how you uproot word curses, y'all. You got to cause those words to fall to the ground and you need to say it out of your mouth. Thank you so much, uh, Steve Mayfield. God bless you. Thank you for your generosity on the cash app. God bless you, sir. You got to cause those words to fall to the ground. This is how you come out of agreement with it because the enemy knows that your words are powerful. Words, the Bible says words are spirit and they are life, okay? So that lets you know that they carry the ability to cause things to happen and manifest not only spiritually, but in the natural. OK, remember that. This is not your regular Sunday morning sermon. This is spirit food. This is this is this is soul food for your spirit. OK. Remember that. So we're going to get ready to close this down. I want to say to you all, thank you all so much. Those of you that have given, those of you that have sold into the stream, I really do hope that this has blessed your life. And I hope that you will implement these strategies. Turn that TV off. Stop listening to that crazy music. Okay. Be, feed your soul, your spirit, man, things that will help you to come out of a hijacked state of mind and emotion. And the only way that you can do that is you got to feed that soul something more powerful than the enemy. And that's the word of God, right? That's prayer. That's fasting. That is communing with him, walking with him consulting him on everything that you do. Okay. This is what we have to do in order to win. This is what we have to do. Don't just think that, oh, I got free TV. I don't have to pay. They are giving you free TV because the Marine kingdom understands the power of seduction. You ain't just going out there blowing your money, spending it on clothes and shoes for no reason. There's something that's going on in your soul that needs to be fixed. And you're attempting to medicate that by, by you know, it, activating the spirit of poverty on your life. 
spending all your money in places where you know you should be spending it. You know you need to be investing. But you can't stop shopping because there's something in your soul that needs your attention. I don't know who that's for. Man, somebody been having a problem with that. My Lord, Purple Crown, thank you so much. God bless you for that. Thank you so much for your generosity. Th thank you for everyone that is uh, given in this live stream. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, is it Led uh, Led Marie? Thank you so much, sis. God bless you for your generosity. Thank you so much. We're gonna pray. And I'm going to pray that God will give you a mind to really see in the spiritual realm, that he will really begin to open up your spiritual eyes so that you can see what you've not seen before. And you can begin to see things in depth and dimension that God will give you the spirit of discernment and not only the spirit of discernment, but you will also have the discerning of spirits. OK, so, you know, when something is bad, you can look at something on TV, hear it and know, uh -uh, turn that off. I don't want that in my spirit. Amen. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you so much for this time that we've been able to to sit, Father, and to meditate on the word of God, those things that you have spoken into my spirit that I was able to orate to the people of God. Lord, I thank you right now because you are a mighty father. You are so loving. You are so kind. You're so precious, Lord. And I thank you for the grace that you have given me. Lord, I thank you for the power and the authority and the anointing, oh God, that rests upon my life, Lord. But even more than that, I thank you for trusting me to impart the word of God to this, your people. Father, I'm humbled and I take I don't take it for granted that you've put me in this seat, Lord, to begin to speak life to the souls of these people that you have sent here tonight. Father, I bless you. I give you glory, Lord. Let our lives begin to glorify you in a magnanimous way, Lord, that people around us have never seen before. Lord, we ask that you would forgive us for every sin and every iniquity that, that we've engaged in. Lord, we uproot sin. We overthrow it. We come out of agreement with the iniquities of our past, present, and even whatever the enemy may try to put in our future. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will begin to reign on our minds. Father, that you will begin to highlight in the spiritual realm to us what we are engaging in and the dangers of a hijacked soul. Father, a soul that is literally on remote control by the enemy. Father, I bind that in the name of Jesus over every life that and every person that is listening to this live stream, even those that will watch on the replay. I bind their souls being on remote control from the enemy, Father, and being hijacked. Father, I uproot hijacked souls, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we throw, we overthrow that spirit and those spirits that are having these souls on remote control. God, we destroy the altars that have been erected in the name of Jesus. Father, we destroy them right now. We cause them to burn by fire fire in the name of Jesus. Every being that's manning those altars, we cause them to die by fire, to fall down and die by fire. Father, we release the angelic forces to begin to mobilize and do battle in the realm of the spirit. Let the souls of your people begin to feel the love and the warmth of you and your arms wrapped around them, oh God. Lord, that they will begin to gravitate towards your word, towards prayer, God, towards fasting. Give us a hunger and a thirst after righteousness, Lord, that we just 
feel like fasting and we fast. We just feel like reading your word and we read your word dear God, that we just feel like praying and we pray God and we don't just pray, but we begin to pray your principles, God. We begin to pray your word. We begin to attach it to kingdom. Father, we pull back our destinies. Everything that has been stolen away from us through a hijacked state in our souls, God, we begin to go into the enemy's camp with angelic assistance, God. And we begin to harness that that belongs to us in the name of Jesus. Father, you said that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. Mm. In the name of Jesus, we take back everything that belongs to us. We take it by force in the name of Jesus. Huh? Mm. Glory to God. Father, we begin to call back our purpose, God. We begin to call back our destinies, God. We begin to activate those gifts that lie dormant in us, God. The things that the enemy wanted to lay to rest through hijacking our souls. He wanted to kill our, our giftings. He wanted to make them lie dormant. Father, he wanted to steal them for his kingdom and call them the treasures of darkness. But God, tonight we are serving the enemy. Notice that we are reactivating by power, by the power of the Holy Ghost, the giftings and the talents that you placed inside of us. Lord, that those gifts are now rising up and we are erecting altars in the realm of the spirit for our gifts to manifest and not just for them to manifest, but God, for them to bring us wealth in the name name of Jesus. You said that you have empowered us to get wealth, Lord, and our gifts are meant to manifest that in the earth. So, Father, we thank you. And not only that, but they are meant to cultivate kingdom, the kingdom of righteousness right here on the earth. Lord, let us always remember kingdom as we are praying, as we are moving by your spirit. Let us always remember to incorporate your principles and everything that you have commanded us to do. Lord, let us walk in your ordinances, your statutes and your commandments. Let us walk in obedience, God, that we will experience the manifold blessing, God. Let your spirit mantle us in an unusual way that we will have significant impact on the people around us, God, that when they will begin to ask us, what must I I do to have the same fire and zeal that you have. Lord, invigorate us even the more with the zeal of the Lord, that we will have a passion for the things of righteousness, oh God. Lord, begin to reign on our minds, Lord, that our souls will become whole in the name of Jesus. Father, we shut every door that the enemy has used to access the vulnerable parts of our souls and to command and to put our minds on remote control. We shut those doors. We cauterize those ports in the name of Jesus. And we decree and declare that they are closed permanently, that those altars are destroyed. Father, we come against every generational curse and we destroy every demonic ley line that caused us to be predisposed spiritually to this hijacking. And God, we thank you right now that you are mobilizing the angelic forces to drive these demons out of the deep reservoirs of our souls, God, and that the light of God is entering us, that it is infiltrating the soul. Power of the Holy Ghost, rain on us right now. Fill these areas with your goodness and your mercy, the light of God that causes us to be enlightened and to see you in a different way, God, in a different dimension, Lord. Cause us to go higher and deeper in you. In the name of Jesus, we put our roots down tonight, God, even the more, and we put our stake in the ground that says that we will live kingdom. We will live kingdom. We will talk kingdom. We will walk kingdom. And that is the kingdom of 
righteousness in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every soul that was hijacked by the enemy tonight has been reclaimed by the kingdom of righteousness. And Lord, we thank you for reigning in that soul, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we call back everything that they lost in that hijacked state of mind. And God, we cause they, them to be made whole right now. In the name of Jesus, we bind every demonic force working against them. And Father, we put up the shield of faith, God, in the name of Jesus, as we walk with the full armor of God, taking unto us the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It is literally what we fight with. It is our weaponry in the spirit. Lord, teach us how to speak and orate the things that you have given us to do. Lord, download in us what we need in the name of Jesus, in the right now, God. Begin to do it for us right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that we speak what you speak. Lord, that we take on the mind of Christ. Oh God, cover our minds with the blood of Jesus. Lord, place an impenetrable barrier of light and fire around us, around Around our children, God, even our lineage, Lord, we stand against every generational curse that it kept running in the family until it ran into us. And today it is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every proclivity, may it be under the blood in the name of Jesus that our past will no longer dictate our right now, nor will it dictate our future because I can see you in the future and you look much better than you look right now. So God, we thank you right now for this time of prayer. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for mobilization, Lord. We thank you that the chains have been lifted and they've been broken in the realm of the spirit, that our hands have been set free, that our productivity is now back in motion, that our mobility has now been reinstituted in our feet, God, and we will be moving forward. And the stagnation, the procrastination, God, the limitation has been broken off of our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now that you're doing it in the powerful name of Jesus. Father, that no witch, no warlock, no sorcerer, no diviner can ever erect an altar to stand against this mighty prayer that has been prayed because it is for your kingdom that we work and why we ask that you do these things so we can have impact on the people that is us that are assigned to our inventory that we lead those people to Christ in the name of Jesus it's not about us it's about you God and so father we thank you Lord in the name of Jesus, that you have done it. It is done. And we decree and declare it to be so, and it shall not be otherwise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We thank you, Lord, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Family. Listen, I give God all the glory. Hallelujah. Continue to watch and pray and make sure if you all know someone that can use this information, pass and forward this video to those that you know are struggling because God is doing a mighty work in this earth. And you know what I say? is Lord, whatever you are doing in this earth and how you're moving in the realm of the spirit for your people that you love, ha, glory to God. Lord, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. I see you, Shavella. Thank you so much. God bless you. I love you. I love you, family. Thank you all so much for joining me tonight. All of you that have given, thank you so much. Those that have uh, given in your time, some have given time and resources. I can't thank you enough. Thank you. God bless each and every one of you. Speedy Rider, daughter of the king. Uh, 
all of you all. Five, thank you all so much. God bless each and every one of you. And you know, I love you all. And I will see you all most certainly on the next video family. And I will see you all healed and whole at the top. Shalom family. Good night, everyone. I love you all. Good night.